So, Aventurian as a character has become one of the most popular characters in the game ever. Since his first dip marketing, from crazy dance moves to intense cutscenes, this guy got it all. I can clearly imagine majority of the player base pulling for him when he comes out next patch. But how does he perform in actual combat? Does he provide enough value to justify pulling for him instead of any other sustain in the game? And how does he fare against Fu Xuan, the current most popular sustain? These are the questions that we are going to be discussing in this video. So without further ado, let's talk about Aventurian. First, let's have a proper explanation of his kit and how he works. Aventurian as a preservation character not only focuses on sustain but also decent damage output through his ultimate and follow-up attacks. His skill is his main source of defensive utility that he provides. He applies shield to all allies that last for 3 turns which is based on his defense. One unique thing about this is that this shield called Fortified Wager can be stacked over multiple use of this skill or any other source that applies it. When fully stacked, this shield can take double the damage of the original shield. Now you can use it repeatedly to stack it up but the main source of stacking it is going to be through his talent which also provide other utility through 50% effect was increased for allies with the shield active. Also Aventurian can resist any kind of crowd control debuff one time every two turns. But that's not the main point. Whenever any of his allies get hit while under his shield or he himself get attacked he will gain one point of blind bet and when he reaches seven points he will consume those seven points and unleashes a seven hit follow-up attack where each hit deals imaginary damage based on his defense to a random target. A very cool part of this point system is that it gives more points at once based on how many of your allies got hit. Like let's say the opponent uses a blast attack targeting 3 of your allies, then Aventurian will gain 3 points. This makes him do follow up attack quite often. One of his passives makes this follow up attack even more impressive. Not only through getting hit, he gains 1 point of blind bet whenever any of his allies uses a follow up attack. This effect can only trigger once every Aventurian's turn so you can't really abuse it through Dr. Ratio and Topaz combo. Also when Aventurian unleashes his follow of attack, he provides a weaker version of Fortified Wager, that is his shield from his skill to all allies, and additionally another layer of this to the ally with the current lowest shield strength, all lasting for 3 turns. Since his shield can be stacked, all the lesser shield that this follow up attack is providing gets added to his original shield from his skill, until it reaches max durability. The main source of stacking his shield will be through his follow up attacks. Finally his ultimate, he randomly gains 1 to 7 points of blind bet and inflicts unnerved on a single target lasting for 3 turns, which makes it so that when any of his ally hits an enemy with unnerved on them, the attack's crit damage is increased by 15%. After this, he himself deals some imaginary damage to that enemy, and since the damage comes after he applies unnerved, you the crit damage increase is also applied to this attack. Some other things to know is his technique which just increases defense based on RNG and it lasts for 2 turns. Now the wording on this technique is pretty unclear so I'm not fully sure how it works so please take it with a grain of salt. And lastly the rest 2 passives. One of which gives him crit rate up to 40% based on how much defense he has which to max out you need to build about 3600 defense on him. Pretty easy to achieve for him as he does get some from his stat bonuses. The other passive just provides the shield from his skill at the start of the battle. Now after going through his entire kit, let's talk about some key points. First, damage. So how much damage are we expecting here? Well from my calcs, without any kind of buffs, his talent should be doing around 15 to 18,000 damage and his ultimate should be doing around 24 to 26,000 damage. Now this is just from one single attack and even though his ultimate deals more damage, his talent will be his major source of damage given how fast Avengerian gets to use it. His talent and his passives helps him gain points faster and if the enemy is constantly using AoE attacks then you will be shocked to see how frequently Aventurian does his follow up attack. And looking at this damage, we can fairly say this, it's not so impressive that you should build him as a straight up damage dealer but it's also not so low that you should completely disregard it. So what kind of build are we looking at here? Well in terms of relic sets, it's extremely simple. He needs a ton of defense. So the defense set is going to be the best option. If you are mainly focusing on damage then the new debuff set will be the best for it. But it's pretty inconsistent without his signature light cone or any other light cone that applies a debuff. For ornaments, well there are two options. You either use the broken keel set for some extra utility, I don't really recommend the Bella Box set since you won't be building any effect retreat on him so you'll only take benefit from the 15% defense increase which is not so much. So I personally recommend going with the Inner Salsado set as it gives crit rate and damage for the fall up attacks and ultimate which are both Avengers damage source. I think you should invest in some damage stats. As I just said, his damage is worth investing. In terms of what kind of stats we want on him, well I made these charts comparing 3 kinds of builds. All of these builds are using his signature light cone and have exact same amount of substat rolls for defense and crit with no wasted stats. 
Now the damage you see in here, keep in mind that your damage will obviously be higher than this. This is calculated without any kind of buffs and all the substat rolls are mid rolls. So if you get lucky with your relics and get high rolls on every piece, well, you might have a better aventurine. The main thing to observe here is that there is little to no damage difference between any of these three builds. That is because the more damage stats you build on him, the less his defense become. And since his multipliers are not insanely high like an actual DPS, you start to see diminishing returns. Of course the difference will become more apparent if we were to add some buffs. The main difference you see here in his shield. For a high damage build, his shield takes a huge hit. On the other hand, you don't lose much for a shield build or a hybrid build. The first thing to aim for is at least 3600 defense as it maximizes his passive's crit rate. Then you want to pour the rest into crit and speed. I only took mid rolls for the substats but if you do were to get lucky with yours and get mostly high rolls so that you can min max his stats and reach 3600 defense without a defense body then the hybrid build will be the best option for both sustain and damage. I personally am quite unlucky with my relics so I would be personally going with a full defense build. Lastly, always use speed on the boost. Even if he does refresh his shield frequently with his follow up attacks, with no speed you will never get his ultimate back. For rotations, you mostly want to go with a skill basic basic rotations where you get his ultimate every 3 to 4 turns. His skill alone will not get him his ultimate that fast but as a preservation character he will get hit quite often. Also with his follow up attack getting a few kills here and there should be able to get him a 3 to 4 turn ultimate. Also with a skill basic basic rotation you get to play him as SP positive which is always helpful. Oh yeah I forgot about light cones. It's extremely simple here. He just needs defense. So any light cone with defense stats are great. Obviously signature is best on him, not only it gives a ton of defense, it also increases his damage. There's nothing better than this. But good news is that next patch we are also getting a new event preservation light cone which will be free to S5. And that light cone is probably going to be one of his best options. It gives close to the same amount of defense his signature gives and it gives quite a lot of damage increase. It's perfect for him. So be sure to get it if you're not planning to get his signature. Alright finally the juiciest part. How does it compares to Fu Xuan? Who is a better pull overall? Recently I made a poll on this topic just to take you guys' opinion on this and I'm so grateful to all of you who shared their thoughts. It really helped me to get a more proper view of these characters. So before we dive into what you guys said, let's finish off with some obvious points so that we can establish who is better at what. I will take 3 most basic points that any sustain slash support needs to excel at. First, sustain or damage mitigation. How much bulky or hard to kill can they make the team? Next, utility. Any kind of buffs or debuffs they provide to increase the team's damage. And lastly, their personal damage contribution. For sustain, I think both have equal potential in this. One has shield and the other absorbs and reduces damage taken. Either the enemy deals so much damage that they broke through the shield or they do so much damage that fusion can't absorb, the fate is the same. Even with the preservation character on the team, if you don't have a dedicated healer, some damage here and there will get passed through the defense anyways. In this regard, I do like Fu Xuan a bit more as she can also heal her whole team and also has an emergency self heal for herself when she goes below 50% HP. This heal will make sure the team is at full health. Aventurine doesn't have anything like this but given how frequently he applies a new shield through his follow up attacks, I don't think you have to worry about anything. Next is utility. Apart from any kind of sustain, what other supports they provide? Before we talk about any kind of damage, Damage buffs, let's talk about some other utilities. Aventurine provides 50% effect res, which is great for both resisting debuffs and helping characters reaching certain thresholds for ornament sets like Broken Keel. Fushuen, on the other hand, gives a 1 debuff immunity to all allies for 3 turns, where all characters can resist any kind of crowd control debuff one time. This gets refreshed when Fushuen uses his skill again, so every 3 turns. Both of these are great, pretty much on the same level, so there's not much comparison here. For damage buffs, though, Aventurine provides a bit of crit damage in a form of a debuff. When he uses his ultimate, he applies unnerved on a single target and any damage focused on said target gets their crit damage increased by 15%. Fushuan on the other hand just straight up increases her whole team's crit rate by 12%. Permanently I'd say. Comparing these two, I think Fushuan is better in this regard. Not only she provides more crit value than Aventurine, the crit rate she provides is for any and every attack the team does. But for Aventurine's crit damage increase, that debuff is only applied to a single target and any of the attack that you deal to that specific target gets buffed. I think it's much more specific and since it's tied to his ultimate, you might see some downtime here and there. Also I personally value crit rate over crit damage. I think players really underestimate how important crit rate is. Not only it's necessary for consistent damage output but also a ton of ornament sets requires you to have certain amount of crit rate and Fushuan really helps with that. So because of these factors, I'd say Fushuan provides better utility than Aventurine. Lastly damage contribution. Straight up there is no competition here. Aventurine's damage output is leagues ahead of Fushuan. 
Overall, after comparing different aspects of your kit, I'd say they both pretty much provide the same level of value to any account. It's all about what you want from a sustain. If you want a great defensive support, you're good with damage, and your only problem is survivability, then Fushion is what you should go for. She can help you survive in harder content with some extra but really helpful buffs. But if you are lacking in the damage department and want your sustain to also contribute to the team's damage, then Avenger is your guy. Both of these characters can easily solo sustain MOC 12. Both can be played as SP positive, one provides more support, another more damage. Just take your pick. Now these are just my thoughts and after reading all your comments on the post I made, most of you seem to share the same sentiment. But there is one argument that a lot of you guys brought up, that the sim universe prefers shield over damage reduction. A lot of you guys said that all the blessing in sim universe, swarm or golden gears are more focused towards shields, which makes Aventurin a better pick than Fushuan when it comes to sim universe, which you are not wrong about. But personally, I think that is only for the situation if you are using the preservation path. Of course for easy clears, paths like preservation are great, but that's not the only option. Players prefer remembrance a lot, and there you would need ice kickers, or I personally prefer nihility path. There are a lot of other ways to clear golden gears. I say you're completely right, and runs on the preservation path, or when you are more focused on preservation blessings, Aventurian will probably outperform Fushuan. But outside of that, the difference is not so much, and Fushuan will still be one of the best characters to use in any kind of sim universe challenges. And that's gonna be it for my first impressions and overall thoughts on Aventurine's current kit. I think he's a great character who pretty much provides the same amount of value as Fu Xuan for any account that needs the damage that he provides. I personally would go for Fu Xuan as I desperately need that crit rate buff. My Zilla still have 64% crit rate and I desperately need that last 6% to activate the Retilion Arena set. But you guys can choose one based on your needs. So thank you very much for watching. If you found this video helpful, drop a like and subscribe for more content like this from yours truly. And do share your own thoughts about it. Or if if I missed something that you would like to discuss. Thanks again and I'll see you guys in my next video.